I've got me a trailer. So let me jack this up. So I've just discovered both those bearings are bad. So let me remove that and see what we find. Ew! Good sign. Both of them are loose. Nice. <coughs> there it goes. Nice. So is it just going to pull off like we'd like it to? Oh my god, you got to be kidding me. This is too easy. There's the bearing. If you'd like to watch the full version of bearing replacement, I have a link in the description and I'll provide one at the end of this video. So I've got a little makeshift table. You're going to lean a lot of towels. Clean up the hub to get it ready for the new bearing. You just got to bite the bullet on this one. Get you a lot of rags. You know, there's probably an easier way. But, I mean, look at that. That's disgusting. Okay, let's do another one. That was too much fun. Stuff it in there, right? And boom! <laughs> that worked pretty good. All right. A little bit more cleaning. Ready for new bearings. More than likely, Tractor Supply will have this on hand. If not, they can get the dimensions and order you a perfect match. The other option is to purchase a fully loaded hub assembly. A little bit more money that way. If you order the bearing kit online, get your inside and outside diameter. If you don't have a micrometer, you can use a crescent wrench. Snug it up. So I just noticed this bearing still has the seal in it, which is right there. So we'll have to pound that out. I could probably do it right here. Let's get on the edge there and give it a big whack. Bearing was in there as well. There it is, seal and bearing. To pound this race out, it's going to be a bit more involved. I'll go to the bench, put it in the vise. Okay, we're set up in the vise. And inside here, it's a pretty cool setup what they have. They've got an indentation in the hub where you can get a punch or a screwdriver that wide right on that race and give it a big whack. If it moves, they have one on the other side and just keep going back and forth until it comes out. See, it's not moving on the first hit. Hmm. Here they are all cleaned up. This one's nice and smooth. And that one's rough and pitted. So that's what's creating all that noise. So here's the resting area for the race with the notches on both sides to knock it out. And then the front is the same way. So I'm going to cut a slot in this race and use this as a tool when I reassemble. You be quiet. Inspect your hubs 
I nicked it up a little bit with the screwdriver, banging that race out. Emery cloth will work, but this is a whole lot quicker. All cleaned up. Amazon. Kurt. Package comes with a seal. Two bearings with their race. Cotter key. That does one hub. This is the back side of the hub. Get your race. And you want the thickest side down. And you can see it's already started a little bit. So all you need is a block of wood. And then tap it in. Alright, we got it flush. And that's where this tool comes in. Use the thickest down the same way the bearing went in. Get it lined up on there. Some wood. And this prevents any damage to the race. Oh yeah. It's in a little bit. Check it. Line it back up. And you'll feel it bottom out when it's there. It makes a little different sound. And I'm almost there. And it looks like I'm getting flush here. I'm going to need something on top of this. So I got lucky and found this 36 millimeter socket that will fit down in the bore to tap that the rest of the way in. And what I mean is, it will go inside the housing. Hit on this side so you don't damage your socket. Just line that up on there. Tap it home. And when it bottoms out, it makes like a different sound. So if you're unsure, You'll see a little gap where the race is supposed to rest on. And you just need to tap it down a little bit more. I'm just barely under right here. But it's, it's all the way down and seated. So now I'll flip it and tap out the tool. So you just get on the old race and gently tap it out. And it will be loose because of the slot you put in it. See there? And you're ready to do this side. Repeat the process. I'm just doing this loosely so you can see it, the process. Hear that different sound? That's when you know it's seated. It's beautiful. You know what? I didn't even have to use the tool that time because it fit perfectly. So if yours fits perfectly, you'll be able to do the same thing. That was pretty nice. They do have kits with various sizes for different size bearings. But if you find something like this around the house, you're fortunate, but with this tool here alone and a block of wood, you don't need the kit. That's a specialty tool right there. That's custom. To pack these bearings, I got some wheel bearing grease from AutoZone, Valvoline, high temperature, important for high speed bearings, 
Now, if you have a boat trailer and it's going to be in and out of the water, you might want to go from marine grade. So here's the process. You get some grease. And start packing it. And you keep packing it until eventually it comes out the top here. Then get some grease and grease inside the hub. A little bit of grease on your race and then your freshly greased bearing right in there. And the grease will hold it in place. And of course, you got to clean your finger off. That's the easy part, right? This is the back side, so it gets the seal. Now, that seal, you want the flat part up. And this green is a seal between the seal and the metal. And then, of course, you got the seal on the shaft on the trailer and what I like to do is get this started tilt it like that a little bit you don't want to use a steel hammer you could but you want just want to lightly tap it the goal here is to get it started as you can see it's wanting to pop out hmm we want to get it started and then <laughs> wow no picnic. Get the block of wood. Hmm. All right. You want that flush. Get your little grease. Around the seal area. Seal facing inward. And you can hold the front bearing. All right. Washer. Castle nut. Snug it up. Snug it up to 20 to 25 torque pounds. That seats the bearing and the grease onto the race. barely move it but you want to turn it the seat the bearing onto the race it's not critical to use a torque wrench because you're gonna loosen it up anyway so we'll back it off until the bolt is loose right there so you can turn it by hand and right there it lines up with the cotter pin so that's where we'll put the cotter pin in. You want it looser rather than tighter. Like I could go right there and get the cotter key. But a little loose really lets it flow. Cap. I'm not going to fill the cap with grease. 
because I'm going to check on this from time to time and repack as needed. Final thoughts? The easy way to go is a fully loaded hub. But if you go through this process, then you know how to do it. And if you have a friend or someone says, hey, have you ever done trailer bearings before? You're like, yeah, I'll do it. So maybe they'll hook you up with a case of Bud Light. Hmm, on second thought, make that Michelob light. Thank you. This trailer's been sitting over 30 years behind a shed in the shade and I'd like to make a storage shed out of it. Thanks for watching. Hope this has helped someone out there. I'd like to invite everyone to follow the build process. I'd like to invite everyone. I'd like to invite